This is part 2 in a mini-series about weight painting. In this part I'll give you an overview of weight paint mode. I'll go over all of the tools and settings, but I'll try to simplify things so that you can focus on the ones that matter. Ok, I'll start from this uh, scene that I'm sharing with you. You can download it from a link that will be in the description. Select the character and press slash to isolate it. I am in solid shading mode and I'll switch the color settings to single as I explained in the previous video. Then I'll quickly create a new vertex group over here uh, in object data properties and I can switch to weight paint mode. If your tools are hidden you can unhide them with uh, the T key and make sure you're in the tool tab. So on the left side you have all the tools that relate to weight painting and in the end panel you see brush settings and some additional options. The number of tools and options is quite manageable to begin with and we can also ignore a lot of them. So by the end of the video I think you'll find weight painting very easy to do. So let's look at the tools on the left. We have a draw tool, a blur tool, average tool, smear tool, radiant tool, sample weight tool and annotation which is uh, not related to weight painting. Right away I can let you know that when you paint bone weights, 95% uh, of the time you'll be using the draw brush, you'll be using the blur brush a little bit and everything else you may actually never touch. So I think that simplifies things quite a lot. At least that's the workflow that I'll be showing you. So let's focus on the most important tool, the draw brush. And if we look at the end panel, you'll see additional brush settings for this tool. By the way, these uh, brush settings and other options are available in two more places. One is over here in the header, and if you don't see it, you kind of have to click on the header and choose header and make sure that show tool settings is checked. And the other place is over here in the active tool and workspace settings. I'll personally work in the end panel, but once you understand these settings, uh, feel free to use any of the areas that is comfortable for you. So for the brush settings of the draw tool, we have blend, weight, radius and strength. And all of these are quite important. For blend, if you click over here, you have a bunch of different modes. But really, all you need is add, subtract and mix. All of the other ones are kind of useless in weight paint mode. The reason they're there is that weight paint kind of shares a lot of settings with vertex paint and probably texture paint. And these blend modes kind of make sense in the other modes, but not in weight paint mode. Now if I choose add and start clicking on my mesh, I'll start adding vertices to my vertex group. The Add Blend only allows you to paint positive values. The strength of these values that you paint is controlled by the weight and strength uh, sliders or values, uh, which I'll explain in a second. And with Subtract on the other hand, I can remove values. I can remove vertices from my vertex group. So if I click in the red areas, they'll start to disappear. Uh, if I click in any of the blue areas, nothing will happen because you cannot have negative values for uh, vertex groups. You can only have values from 0 to 1. So once uh, you reach blue or 0, then nothing will happen when you click. Uh, the, in the same way, in add mode, if you click in the red areas, then nothing further will happen because the maximum value of 1 has already been reached. Then there is uh, mix mode. And actually, this is the only one that I use. In mix mode, if I have weight and strength uh, set to 1 and I click on my mesh, I'll start adding vertices to, to the group, just like with add blend. If I set weight to 0 and start clicking in these ed red areas, then I'll remove the weights. And that is, again, almost exactly like in subtract mode. And so I think you start to understand why I only use mix blend mode. It allows me to do everything I can do with add and subtract, but I don't need to switch uh, the blend modes. I just have to change the weight to either one or zero. And that's quite efficient if you ask me. Okay, the radius value is very easy to understand. This circle that you see on the screen is the size of my brush. And if I change the radius, uh, it will change the size of my brush. 
Weight and strength, on the other hand, may take some uh, getting used to. They work together, but in general, you can say that weight is the maximum vertex weight that you want to apply, and the strength acts as a, as a multiplier. With mix blend mode, which I recommend using most of the time, if I set the weight to 1 and strength also to 1, and I click on, on a vertex, let's enable a wireframe to see things better, and let's zoom in and really click exactly on this vertex. Then if I go to edit mode and select this vertex and switch to item, I can see that this vertex now has the weight of exactly 1. Let's go back to weight paint mode tool and set the strength to 0.5, weight is still to, at 1, and let's go to another area which is empty and let's again click in the, on, on this vertex. Go to edit mode, select this vertex and I can see that again the strength is 0.5. Now with these same settings, strength to 0.5, if I click again I kind of expect logically that the weight will become 1 next. But that is not what happens. As you can see, the color is not red yet. Uh, I can check the strength and it's and the weight is 0 0.75. So if I click a couple of more times over here and then go to edit mode, then the value that I set is not exactly 1. It is It kind of goes towards 1, but never re quite reaches 1. If I wanted it to become 1, I would uh, set the strength to 1 and click again and then check the, the weight and it's 1. So the exact behavior of mix is a bit hard to describe, but luckily when you paint bone weights, you don't have to, to paint exact values. The actual deformation of your mesh will give you visual feedback and that's how you know if your values are good or not. But if you want to be more precise, you can either use the add and subtract modes or you can uh, go in edit mode and, and set values manually. But the workflow that I recommend is to keep blend to mix and then the weight value should be either 1 or 0, nothing in, in between. Basically, when you set it to 1, you tell Blender that I want to add values, I want to add vertices to my uh, vertex group. When you set it to 0, you say I want to remove vertices. And then the strength value simply controls how strong the adding or the subtracting is. With that, we actually covered the most important stuff. Uh, let's look at some of the additional options. We have these advanced options. The accumulate uh, option uh, makes your brush behave as an airbrush which is again kind of pointless in weight paint mode. Front faces only, I think it's kind of broken or it doesn't do much. Uh, stroke is again more useful in the other modes. Uh, fall off, you can kind of change uh, your fall off if you want. I know that some people prefer to use this flat or basically no fall off, but personally I just use the uh, default one. And then we have this cursor option. Uh, the cursor is basically this circle, the size of your brush. If you uncheck this uh, option, then the size of your brush won't be visible. You know, the effect of your brush will be exactly the same, but uh, you won't see the circle, which is completely pointless in my opinion. You can also change the color of the circle and so on, which again, I don't want to mess with. So yeah. Just ignore these additional settings and it's going to be all good. Okay, let's look at the other tools. Uh, next we have the blur tool, which I, as I said, you will be using from time to time. The brush settings that you have is are the radius and the strength. And I only change the radius personally and keep the strength always to 1 and that works for me. The function of this tool is to blur your weights. This is very similar to the Blur tool in Photoshop or GIMP, and I think it's uh, very intuitive to use. Next, we have this Average tool, which kind of tries to average the values of the area where you click. I find it very unintuitive to use. I never use this tool. Next uh, is the Smear tool. This is, again, the same as the Smudge tool in um, 
In Photoshop, and again, I never use this tool for weight painting and especially for painting bone weights. The next tool is Gradient. Again, it is similar to the Gradient tool in 2D software. If you drag, you kind of get this nice gradient, which can be useful when you paint um, weights for some sort of simulation, maybe. But for for bones, uh, I think I find it uh, generally not very useful and I never use it. Then we have this uh, sample tool. If I choose it and uh, I click over here where I probably have a value of one and then I change to draw tool, then you can see that my weight value has changed to one. I'm going to choose the sample tool again, click in another area, which is not red, and then switch to draw tool again. And my weight is has changed to 0 0.676. And I can imagine this being useful in certain situations, but generally for bone weights, I almost never use it. So there we have it. Uh, we quickly went over all of the tools and uh, brush settings for uh, weight paint mode. And to recap, uh, you're mostly going to use the draw tool. You're going to keep your blend to mix. You're going to keep your weight to either one or zero. And, um, and with the strength value, you're going to control how uh, strongly you're applying your values. One thing that I forgot to mention are shortcuts. Uh, I often use a shortcut to change my radius and the shortcut for that is F. If you just press F in the viewport, I can expand and contract this circle. Weight and strength also have a shortcut. For weight, it is control F. And for strength, it is shift F. Personally, I don't use the Control F and Shift F shortcuts because honestly, I keep forgetting which one is which. Uh, so I either either tweak the values from here or if I actually right click in the 3D viewport, I get these same values uh, and I can very quickly slide them and change them. So I use F for the size of the brush and then I right click and change weight and strength over here. And then there's the blur tool, uh, which you can just switch to this tool. And if you need to blur an area, just click in, click in that area and it will be blurred. Uh, and all of the other tools you can kind of forget. All of these additional stroke options you can ignore. There are also the symmetry options. If I enable X symmetry and then paint in on, on the right shoulder, you can see that the left shoulder is also being painted. But to really explain these symmetry options, we also have to look at this X mirror option. Uh, we need to explain what the differences between those two are. And for that uh, purpose, we actually need to have bones. All of these options below are actually more easily explained with uh, when painting bones. So uh, with that, I'm going to wrap this section up. And in the next we're going to see how we can paint bone weights. Thank you. I hope you learned something. And if you like this video, please click like and subscribe.